I am Laszlo Lorand. I am an emeritus professor at Northwestern University, uh, lately from the Department of Cell and Molecular Biology at the Medical School. In my own field of hemostasis and blood coagulation, the human clotting, imagine that this is an intermolecular discussion between thrombin, factor 13, calcium ions, and fibrin. It's a lovely communication, quite unique in biochemistry. I'm unlucky in an ingenious experiment showed that thrombin action preceded clotting. Thrombin did something to fibrinogen. Fibrinogen has to be converted into these fibrin molecules that are shown on the left there. We compared the N-termini of fibrinogen and fibrin, and we found that whenever thrombin clotted fibrinogen, new N-termini of glycine appeared on the fibrin molecule, and uh, the old N-termini uh, alanine uh, from fibrinogen disappeared somehow. I found that that fragment was released in the form, and I gave the name fibrinopeptide. But what is interesting at the moment, and similar to if you open the top of a beer bottle to get to the good beer, the interesting thing is that once fibrinopeptide leaves, what is left behind on the fibrin molecule, as Doolittle calls it, they were knobs that fitted into pre-existing holes in the fibrin. Fibrin is in. When it converted it to fibrin, how fibrin assembled, fibrin molecules already have the ability to assemble reversibly. What happens to factor 13? What kind of a function does it have? What was the nature of the chemical reaction that cross-linked the fibrin molecules? Factor 13, as isolated from plasma, contains two different uh, subunits, A and B, and the A was the potentially active form, but only potentially active form. In order to convert it to the active enzyme, we needed thrombin and calcium, as we found. We could titrate the factor 13A reactive Q sites and K sites, and other people contributed to this work too, um, with great ease, and found that all these sites were located in the unstructured C termini of the gamma and alpha chains of fibrin. This is a general rule now for most transglutaminases that they want to mold their substrates to their active center, and they start out with substrates that are essentially unstructured. The enzyme that spot welds them will knit them together into a hardened core. Evolution produced two different paths to the clotting of fibrinogen. Was, one was a simple one, so a single step of taking a protein, modifying it to form a clot, whereas the human blood clotting system, as we worked it out, is far more complicated. This is what evolution produced to make the human clotting 
human board cutting system far more complicated than the first model whereby you would expect the fibrinogen could be directly crosslinked by a single enzyme to become a stabilized clot. No, you have to rely on all sorts of feed-forward regulations and controls to make the system coordinated in a timely fashion to produce the stabilized clot when it's needed and not to produce it when it's not needed.